I'm Kayvon Golestane. I'm with the Conscious Health Institute, and today we are doing an interview with Professor Sheila Kitzinger. She is an honorary professor of midwifery at Thames Valley University in Oxford, England, and she's an anthropologist and a graduate of Oxford University in England. Good evening. Hello. Sheila. Hi. Sheila, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and your work, please. What I'm particularly interested in is the experiences of childbirth that women have and what happens in societies where they are often disempowered and looking at the powerful institutions which attempt to control birth and the way women feel, well, very often trapped and humiliated. So I'm looking at the unhappy experiences of childbirth, but also I'm looking at very happy, joyful experiences. Because my own, I've had five babies, and my, my own experiences have been absolutely, you know, sexually satisfying and exuberant. It's the only sport I can do, actually. And um, so I work with women, some of them understood to be under stress, like women in prison, for example, and asylum seekers whose babies are taken away, sometimes when they're still breastfeeding. So I work with women like that, but I look at it from a larger feminist perspective too, and with my daughters who are also working in uh, rape crisis and um, with um, feminism generally and with marriage for gays, uh, all this kind of feel. We, we share a common ground and we talk a lot together. Okay. Now let's back up a little bit to anthropology. Mm -hmm. Many people may have heard the word, they may not know what it is. What is anthropology for you and how did you get attracted to studying anthropology? Well, anthropology goes beyond psychology. It looks at the social context of our lives and the pressures on us to behave in certain ways. And these change over time, of course, too. They're historical. And I got into it really because originally I wanted to study psychology. And then when I looked at it, it wasn't really psychology. I certainly didn't want to study the psychology of rats. And they're rather good at that at Oxford, for instance. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to look at how the experience was for women and the context within which birth occurred in widely varying societies. So is it fair to say that one cannot separate the mind from, the, from culture? No, of course one can't. Just as one can't about sex. It isn't just to do with physiological events, certainly not with the constraints are put on us to behave in a certain way, but also with the whole, the whole power and thrust of living and the meaning that experiences have for us. Mm -hmm. Now, many disciplines like to take a part of the human experience and separate it from another part. It seems to me that anthropology tries to avoid that trap. Is that correct? Yes, but it's terribly easy to get into a tick-the-boxes approach and to look at numbers. And there are anthropologists who do that because they think it's safer. But mm -hmm. I think this is the wrong approach. And the, I see. the quality of experience is important too. And as I say, the deeper meaning that experiences have for us, whether it's sex or dying or uh, giving birth, a whole lot of other things. So once you studied anthropology, though, it seems perhaps that you started to gravitate to a certain part of anthropology or you became interested in women in particular. Mm and their lives in different That's cultural right. contexts. That's right. Say more about that. Well, my mother was a midwife, actually. And so from, from childhood, I've heard my mother discussing the meanings that birth have. And she was also, she did a lot of counselling. And I remember as a 
a child of about three, four, I'd sit behind her chair and listen to her talking to women and listening to women's problems. So I was really schooled in that. That was my background. And then I had five children of my own, all born at home, including twins. And I realized that there was very little written about the wider experience and the deeper experiences of birth. It was often to do with whether you were afraid or whether you weren't afraid, and how much you were afraid, or how little you were afraid, and whether you did the right kind of breathing. Now, that's a terrible approach. Whether you put on the right performance, uh, whether in France, where I lived for a while, it's, it's whether you were really quiet during childbirth, because you'd done your exercises, so you shut up and got on with it. Um, this seems to me a very limited approach to birth. Mm -hmm. Now, be were you, had you already studied anthropology before you had your children? Yes. I see, I see. So having your personal life experience among them, being around a mother that practiced midwifery, and then having children had a big impact on your intellectual development and your professional development. Yes, I never practiced midwifery. I caught babies, but often because that was... I was with a woman in either our Western technological culture or some other culture, and things moved faster than the institution, the representatives of the institution thought. And so I got not bad at catching babies. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't know the situation in England, but I do know in many countries uh, the practice of midwifery is sometimes highly restricted. What is the situation in England as uh, far as giving birth and the medicalization of mm. birth? Birth is medicalized, but we have a terrific midwifery system here, and it's acknowledged that there are far too few midwives. So, yes, midwifery, I think British midwives can, are some of the most living examples of the way that one-to-one -one care can be given in childbirth and women can feel safe in their own bodies and amongst other women.